This is day two, part two of our eight day overland trip through the Southwest. And check out this ride up Broken Arrow and how to turn lemons into, well, vodka lemonade. part of doing this is showing everybody the beautiful and amazing places that you wake up going across the country <laughs> oh yeah wait till you see this yep long J parking lot sometimes uh, life gives you lemons and they're they're just lemons they're just they're just lemons well Finally got into Arizona, to the first trail, Schnibley Hill. I'm here. Jeep's here. Says it's open online, every ride checked, but. So super awesome, and it's windy, so sorry about the audio, but first trail from Denver all the way here, and can't even do it. Hopefully this gets a little better soon. The start of this trip has been like my high school GPA, a complete failure. Being able to improvise and being flexible is key on trips like this. Also, when you're solo, you can flip out and yell in the car without having to apologize for going bananas. I shall not be held back. So I doubled back up and around to Sedona's main entrance. Made a beeline for Sedona's iconic trail, Broken Arrow. Think I've earned it. Airing down. Always a good thing. Gonna do 20 up front, 22 in the rear. Should get everything done. Well, Jeep had a great idea with the, uh, you know, quick disconnect button. That didn't work, so I installed this little guy right here for a manual. And it turns out it just keeps my sway bar permanently disconnected. Doesn't reconnect now. Which does mean at least taking off the end links. I know, overkill. It's super easy. So, you know, little win. Well, here we go. Finally hitting the trail. Doing broken arrow. Not a uh, badge on or anything like that, but seen enough of it where if you're in the area, it seems like you should hit it. And I guess that's the gatekeeper. I don't know. Saw a bunch of other vehicles uh, struggle busting with it. We'll see. I'm looking forward to finally uh, hitting a trail in Arizona. I haven't done that before. Absolutely beautiful. Reading 78 degrees. That's stunning, really. I used to live right outside of Zion National Park. And it kind of is almost like you could off-road over there. But uh, fingers crossed this day gets a little better than it started out after the first trail being closed, but so far so good. The beginning is an easy dirt road. And as you will see, this will become a theme. So know your trail etiquette. All right, stand corrected. Now at the first actual obstacle, series of steps and waterfalls. It looks like there's an easy way and a harder way. Why not try the harder way first? Running heavy, but we'll see shortly how much of a difference that makes. And get to try out the new uh, GoPro mounts. It's not looking great. Apparently, 
being high centered is a bad thing. And there's a little puddle. So, I guess. I was running heavy, I'm not wanting this day to end in catastrophe. And we'll take the easy line. It's a bummer. Never, never like doing that, but. I was to have an issue now. Oh, that would really uh, be a stinger on the rest of this trip. After this legitimate obstacle, the trail starts throwing small ledges, boulders, and ruts at you to keep your hands and feet busy, along with throwing bikes, jeeps, and more jeeps at you. This one made me put it in four-wheel drive. And if you don't know, I do have a manual. So I tend to go four low. Unless some occurrences that the rest of you might not. And four tens with the manual do help, but 35 is not much weight. It's uh, hard to get her moving sometimes, but that was definitely a lot more bark than bite just now. Well, this looks like a Moabby sort of area. Pretty sticky rock. The view is ridiculous. I think this trail is, you've got a stock Jeep. Ah, stock Rubicon. You know what you're doing. You won't have a problem with this trail. Probably be more fun. But if you love seeing the outdoors, but hate hiking, and it, I know it looks like I'm a skinny guy and I should be in shape. Really, there's a overweight smoker trapped inside of me, and uh, maybe that's who I was in my past life. But either way, I can drive there. I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, and I get hated on for it. But look at the see these amazing views. That you can see up there on the GoPro. These pink Jeeps are like ants at a picnic, absolutely everywhere. Had a chance to talk to a few drivers, pretty cool folks, and if they are packing potential drivers into their Jeeps, I suppose that's less vehicles on the trail. The end is worth the traffic. Well, the views up here are no joke. Worth the crowds, Not all the pink Jeeps. I don't think you'll have a problem getting up here whatsoever. Why don't you take your time? So I had whiz past an offshoot. Can't have that. This spur pretty much goes straight up, supplying the views we all want. There are some fun rock obstacles up here, but the 4x4 part of the trail eventually ends, giving way to single track. This would actually be a great place for lunch, crush some cans, and relax a little bit. And back we go. Although this is a relatively short trail, you experience a little bit of elevation gain, about 300 feet. You start off on the desert floor, work your way up through a sparse forest, and end up on rocky outcrops. Another pink picnic ant. You all saw this area on the way up. Now that I have a little extra time, it is clear this is an adult playground. Pick your pleasure. Vertical wall, steps, flexi, ruts, waterfall, off camber. I say, let's flex it out. Depending on what you drive and what you're used to, 
You might be thinking, wowza, holy smokes, that looks super. Or you might be thinking, yeah, I'll run that backwards, blindfolded and beer in hand. Oh yeah, girl, drop it to the flow. <clears throat> Anyways, both views are totally right. I usually like to be more aggressive, but with all this extra weight and rooftop tent, I find myself as comfortable tackling obstacles as Humpty Dumpty on top of a wall during a windy day. About that rooftop tent, I'll give my opinion on having one soon enough. Like anything, there's usually bad with the good. On these longer overlanding trips, I tend to get a little gun shy. Really don't want to break something because I was getting a little overzealous. Yeah, yeah, you caught me. Got to the top of the highest diving board, decided I was too far up. Climbed back down while you all laughed at me. I just need to remember, me messing up on camera will get way more views on YouTube. It's good to push yourself and your rig at times. Or how else could you talk yourself into justifying all those new parts? At the end of the day, just make sure you're having fun. That's the point. Unless you're dead set on showing up on a 4x4 fails video. And if so, we will all thank you and buy you a cold one for it. So, back down at the bottom. Try to take every little hard line I can find. And not that this is the first video you've probably seen on Broken Arrow, but you're still probably curious of what I thought. Super fun trail. Pretty busy. This is a Monday afternoon, but it is spring break, so that might account for some of it. That being said, there are tons of pull offs, so anytime you come across somebody, you're not really waiting. That. The issue of too many people is kind of eliminated, which is nice. The views are spectacular. If you're running 40s and a day in the 60 and 80, like you might be a little bored, but what you get to see is worthwhile. And if you have something that's, you know, 35s or smaller, even 31s, be able to hack this if you know what you're doing. Um, I guess I'd say I'd highly recommend this trail. There's a, there's a reason it's so popular. It's the views, and there's a couple obstacles to keep you entertained. So um, if you're in this area of Arizona, um, there's so much to do, but give it a try. Get your uh, 4x4 out there and see what it's made of. Thanks for watching. And remember, what's your goal?